Blending modes are mathematical formulas that describe how the pixels you paint on a given layer affect the pixels below it. They are used to produce all sorts of time-saving effects, to darken, to lighten your art, to add contrast, to make colors more vibrant, or even to replace colors. You'll get to use them a ton. They are very, very useful. Here, I've set up a document to show you a few of the most common blending modes in Krita and to tell you a bit about how to use them. So first of all, there are two places where you can find those blending modes. There is a drop-down menu in the toolbar and a similar one in the layers docker. They both provide the same set of blending modes and each entry in the list corresponds to a different mathematical equation. You've already used blending modes without knowing it. When you click on the little erase icon and you start erasing, you are virtually switching to the erase blending mode, one of the first in the list. Erasing is a way to do the opposite of the normal blending mode, the one you are using most of the time. The normal blending mode just takes your color in the color picker, and when you paint, it applies it on top of the layers below. It just replaces the pixels that are on screen with your selected color. And it uses your opacity as well, so that if you paint at 100% opacity, it will completely replace the pixels below. But if you paint at 50% opacity or with a softer brush, it will gently overlay the paint on top of the existing pixels. So that's for the most basic ones. Then there are two blending modes that are very useful for lightening and darkening your painting. The first one is the multiply mode. So it's called like that because under the hood, what it does is it multiplies the color that's on the canvas with the color you are painting. The result is that instead of adding the new color on top of the previous one, it actually darkens the existing colors on the canvas. It is used a lot to draw shadows, but also to add colors to a grayscale image. We'll get to use it a lot in the future. You can see how you can pick a given color and paint on top of itself with the multiply mode and an airbrush and it's going to create some nice, soft, colorful shadow. It doesn't work perfectly with all tones though, but it does work pretty well with oranges and greens, as you can see. The next blending mode is the screen mode. This one does kind of the opposite of the multiply mode. It lightens your image based on the color you have selected. You can see that lightening with an orange doesn't give the same effect as lightening with a blue. It will pull your color towards the one that you selected. However, it will lighten it at the same time. To show you the next blending mode, I'm going to have to modify the shapes a little and I'm going to add some darker shades. Okay. So the next ones are Lighten and Darken. Lighten works in that way. If I pick a dark color and I start to paint, you will see that it only paints in the dark areas of my layers. The Lighten mode just keeps the pixels that are lightest on the canvas. The orange, the blue and the light green here are lighter than the color I've picked. But if I start to pick a white color, I'm going to override the existing orange, blue, and light green. So it is used to paint inside of dark areas like nuts and crannies, cracks, for instance. If you want to add moss to a crack, the lighten mode can be very useful. And there is that opposite mode called darken, which does just the opposite. If I pick a light color, you can see that it only paints in the light area. It keeps the dark colors. The darkened blending mode is useful if you want to paint on top of highlight. The next blending mode I'm going to show you is extremely useful. It's called overlay. 
Look at what it does. If I use a very bright color, white, it lightens and add contrast to my layers. If I use a very dark color, black, it darkens and adds contrast to my colors. It works in two ways at once. If you use light color, it's going to lighten your colors. If you use dark colors, it's going to darken your colors. It's in a sense a combination of multiply and screen. But on top of that, it does add contrast and spices up your shading. You can overlay with all sorts of colors to get very rich effects. If I start to overlay green on top of that green shape, it's going to move towards very bright and vibrant colors, but also a bit towards yellow. The overlay blending mode can help you to achieve all sorts of nice effects. And a bit like the multiply mode, it can be very useful when it comes to coloring a grayscale image. There is another mode that's very useful when it comes to adding color contrast, and it's called color dodge. This one will work a bit like the overlay, but it will only brighten your colors. It uses your foreground color. The brighter the color you have picked, the more it will apply that color. And if you start using a darker color, it will still brighten the image, but it will do that that much lower. And it will apply a little bit of the tint of your color to the layer below. You can see how it produces really nice soft shading. But it's also very useful when it comes to adding contrast and completely blowing up your colors and highlights. There is one mode that's extremely useful that's called color. And this one is just used to replace the colors on the canvas with the color you have picked in the color picker. It's going to replace the hue and the saturation of the colors you affect. If I pick a blue color, it's going to replace everything with blue. If I pick a red color, it's going to replace everything with some kind of pink red. But as it retains the luminosity of your layer, it does produce a range of colors instead of just replacing everything with a single color like the normal mode. And as you can expect, this blending mode is not only useful for recoloring, but also for coloring a grayscale image. Blending modes is a very complex topic that requires a lot of practice. So instead of adding lots of less useful blending modes to our list, I'm going to show you some things you can do to better work with blending modes in Krita. First of all, if you can access blending modes manually from the menu in the toolbar, I really recommend that you use keyboard shortcuts instead. There is a long list of keyboard shortcuts associated to blending modes. And you'll find an entire category dedicated to that in the preferences window. You can see there's a ton of them, but thankfully you don't have to remember them all. They all use a combination of Alt, Shift and a letter. Often, the letter corresponds to the first letter of the blending mode. For instance, if you press Shift-Alt-S, you are going to get the screen blending mode. If you press Shift-Alt-N, you're going to get the normal blending mode. Shift-Alt-M brings the multiply blending mode. You also have Shift-Alt-D for color dodge and Shift-Alt-C for color. Then you will have Shift-Alt-O for overlay. However, the darken and the lighten blending modes are less easy to access. They are respectively mapped to Shift-Alt-G for lighten and Shift-Alt-K for darken. However, these shortcuts only control the blending modes in the toolbar, which are different from the ones in the layers docker. When you apply a blending mode in the layers docker, it will only apply to the selected layer. If I set a new layer to multiply and I paint in normal mode, you will see that it does multiply with the layers below it. These blending modes that are associated with a layer are non-destructive. You can change them at any time. The blending modes that you have in the toolbar and that you access with keyboard shortcuts are, on the other hand, destructive. 
The pixels get applied on your canvas and they transform the colors definitively. Note that the blending mode that you set in the toolbar will get saved with your brush presets. If you check the brushes by David Revoix, he has a selection of FX brushes, and if I click on them, pay attention to how the blending mode changes in the toolbar. His FX brushes are actually just using different blending modes. One last thing I want to show you is that when you use a color smudge brush, you might get weird results with your blending modes. This is due to the fact that these brushes can blend paint on the canvas and they will only apply color, at least in the brush presets I've made, if you start to press hard on the brush. So by default, they will only mix colors on the canvas. You can use them to both apply certain effects and mix the result with the colors that are on your layer. This is quite handy. I really recommend that you use the keyboard shortcuts to switch between blending modes. Or experiment with Shift Alt and pressing keys. Most letters are mapped to a blending mode and you will see the blending mode change in your toolbar instantly. So you just have to learn them that way. You'll have to experiment a lot with blending modes to get a good hang of them. So get started today. And we'll see each other in the next video where we'll talk about the multi brush, wrap around, and symmetry tools.